Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. Ty Vincent. This video is regarding the use of low-dose immunotherapy to treat uh, what they're calling long COVID or uh, what I think is more appropriately called post-COVID syndrome or syndromes, plural, uh, because they're not the same illness in different people. Um, let's talk a little bit about what my interpretation is of what's causing post-COVID syndromes. Uh, the, I know the government and some other you know, medical entities are working on trying to sort this out and figure out what this illness is all about. I think the problem they're running into is that they are looking at it as though it was a particular singular illness, and, and it's not. It's a very diverse collection of immune-related chronic phenomena in patients that is unique to each individual based on their own circumstances. And so that's why they're not able to clearly identify or describe what long COVID really is or what's causing it. I think they're just going about it in all the wrong way. <clears throat> this, this phenomenon is very familiar to me, having worked with immunological illnesses for 20 years now, and um, or at least 15 using LDI. And what I've seen is that patients who have complex chronic immunological inflammatory illnesses, or, or they just have some simple discrete allergy that has developed or some named autoimmune disease like psoriasis or Crohn's disease or something. In most cases, people with chronic immunological illnesses can go back in time and see that they're, before they got sick, they had some kind of extreme stress to their system. And it can be an, a direct immunological stress like a vaccination or an illness like an acute respiratory virus illness or a course of antibiotics even that disturbs their, their body's flora to the point where their immune system has a significant shift in response patterns. Or it could be psychological stress, uh, somebody who goes through a divorce or they lose their job or a death in the family, anything like that. If it's stressful enough to the person, their body can perceive it as an attack. And in response, it can mount its own sort of immune-based attack on whatever it doesn't really know and it can't be directed because there isn't a real thing to attack. So what happens in these cases is the person develops some kind of seemingly random immune reaction problem, whether it's a chemical sensitivity or a food allergy, or they become allergic to their cat or their dog, or they develop multiple sclerosis. Or in my case, when I went through an extremely stressful year, I developed type 1 diabetes at age 39, which is autoimmune. Uh, so these things happen to people all the time, um, and it's very common. Other things that will, will be catalysts for the development of chronic immune illnesses include physical trauma like car accidents or surgery uh, or, or having a baby, a major hormonal shift in a woman. Having, a, having a, a pregnancy and then a child is one of the most common immune catalysts that I see happening to people uh, where they... <clears throat> had no problems before pregnancy and then after the pregnancy they develop all these allergies or new immune diseases disorders they never had before they can develop you know chronic inflammatory situations that look like fibromyalgia or they get di diagnosed as fibromyalgia I should say because fibromyalgia is not actually a real thing it's just a wastebasket term that the rheumatology community came up with years ago to try to put patients into that they didn't understand <clears throat> and a uh, long COVID or post COVID syndrome is another situation like that Usually anything that has the word syndrome in it means the doctors don't understand what's going on. But um, what seems to be happening in these people that's pretty clear to me based on my experience is that they get a substantial coronavirus illness in some cases or in other cases they have a very mild course uh, with the coronavirus infection with COVID. Or in some cases people tested positive, didn't think they were sick really at all. And then within the next one to three months after the coronavirus infection or illness, whether they're sick or very sick or not, they develop these new immunological rooted problems that can range from fatigue and brain fog to insomnia, mood disturbances to physical weakness, neurological problems like numbness or tremors or muscle jerks. They can have joint pain, muscle pain, chronic widespread undifferentiated pain. They can develop new allergies they never had, chemical sensitivities they never had, or other named autoimmune disorders like Guillain-Barre syndrome or myocarditis. We know that these things can be <clears throat> instigated by uh, the virus itself, myocarditis, Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's very well described that various autoimmune disorders can commonly uh, be triggered by certain respiratory viruses. Um, and in this case, 
the COVID-19 sort of cadre of viruses are just very immune stimulating. And that's more immune stimulating than the usual coronaviruses, which they are abundant. Coronaviruses have been around forever, longer than humans, and they will be here long after us. And there are always hundreds of different strains circulating around the world at any one time. It's just that some of them are more immunogenic than others. So it follows that the COVID illness with these more immunogenic strains of the virus would create more post-COVID autoimmune and immunological disorders than the routine run-of-the-mill common cold sort of strains did. It makes sense to me. It's what I've observed for quite a long time in patients with these sorts of illnesses. So the way to go about correcting this or treating this problem is not to focus on the fact that it came after a virus or coronavirus specifically. The virus is no longer relevant at all in treating these patients. And investigating these conditions based on an infection with the virus and circumstances surrounding the virus will not lead you to the answer and how to treat each one of these individual patients. You have to look at each person and see what problems that person has developed, what symptoms they have. Do they have allergies? Do they have what looks like an autoimmune disorder or some more chronic, vague, chronic inflammatory condition, and then treat them accordingly with whatever technique you have. So what I use is low-dose immunotherapy, which is an immune tolerance promoting therapy. So if we decide that the person has begun reacting to streptococcus, for example, one of the fairly common things that will happen to patients after they had a COVID illness is they will lose their sense of taste and smell, which is kind of odd and it was fairly unique to the COVID-19 situation. And it turns out that through the work of uh, one of my uh, colleagues who uses LDI as well as I do, and uh, my experience with some patients after he clued me into this, it seems to be triggered by strep. Streptococcus seems to be the antigen responsible for the loss of taste and smell in COVID patients that lingers well after the respiratory illness has gone away. I've also seen people who have lost their hearing um, suddenly and without explanation, and that has been recovered by strep. So we know that strep as an antigen can cause various strange neurological deficits in people, you know, rheumatic fever, is a very complex situation where patients reacting to strep will develop joint inflammation, brain and nervous system inflammation, skin inflammation, heart valve deformity. Strep can be a very broadly reactive antigen and cause multi-system immune diseases. But a lot of these people, the ones that end up with the fibromyalgia sort of constellation of problems, you know, fatigue, brain fog, muscle aches and pains, maybe with some neurological symptoms, maybe with not, a lot of them will be reacting to Lyme organisms, the organisms that are responsible for Lyme, back to Lyme disease, like Borrelia, and then the, co the things called co-infections like Bartonella, Babesia. These are common antigen targets in people because they just live in everybody, and they're something that our immune system seems to be more reactive to than other things. So I, I, I find a lot of these patients seem to respond to the Lyme mixture that we have with, with LDI if they have that sort of set of symptoms. If you've developed some named or discrete autoimmune disorder like rheumatic, like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, we treat patients for whatever their symptom complex is and the antigens that are likely to trigger that based on our experience using LDI for years. So sorting through what's going on with people uh, requires forgetting what the catalyst was, forgetting that it was caused by a coronavirus infection because it's no longer relevant to you at all. Um, and just focusing on what conditions are currently present in the person and figuring out what might be underlying those as a chronic immune stimulating antigen. It's usually some microorganism living in the body that your body has targeted and it's not the virus. Or you could develop allergies or chemical sensitivities or sensitivities to EMF, mold, things like that that are giving you very constant symptoms because those exposures are pretty ubiquitous in your environment. So that's the way we have to approach these people. Uh, the catalyst of the coronavirus, my, my analogy for that for people that still have a hard time understanding why the virus isn't relevant to the treatment, is like a car accident. So if you're hit by a car and you get a broken leg and a head injury and a cracked rib, treating your condition is not dependent on anything from the car. We don't need to know the license plate number, the make and model of the car. Getting the car isn't going to help us treat you. You now have to deal with the injuries that were caused by the car accident. And so these post-viral syndromes are similar to that. The virus was just the catalyst that caused an immune reaction to occur, but the chronic symptoms are perpetuated by an immune reaction to something else, something that usually resides inside the person. Using coronavirus itself as an LDI antigen is sometimes applicable in people who have 
persistent lingering respiratory symptoms following their COVID illness. So some patients continue for weeks or months to have shortness of breath, a dry hacking cough, feel like they have difficulty drawing in a breath or maybe irritation in their lungs, something that indicates some kind of persistent respiratory tract inflammation. In those patients using the coronavirus itself, which we usually have, we have in a combination with a bunch of other respiratory viruses, we just use them together, that will alleviate those symptoms for people with a high degree of success. So if you work with somebody for, for LDI with one of these lingering long COVID or post COVID syndrome issues, we go through all of that. You know, do, have you lost your sense of taste and smell? Do you still have respiratory symptoms? What other symptoms do you have? What's being affected? And you have to devise a, a, a individualized treatment plan for that person based on what's actually going on. It's completely doable. Uh, this particular therapy is highly successful with conditions like this. Other people who have skills with other kinds of immunotherapy might be able to help you too, but that is the way to approach the post-viral syndrome situation we're seeing after COVID. So if uh, you know anyone who's dealing with this kind of problem, feel free to send this video to them for information purposes. Anybody who wants to know more about what we do specifically, our website is globalimmunotherapy.com. Uh, I'm Dr. Ty Vincent, and uh, hopefully we find a solution.